We are in Pythonista. We want to create a game uh, with iPad. So the first thing that we are going to do is from scene, that is the model that we will use for our uh, game, uh, import asterisk. That means import everything from scene. And then create a class called game and inherit everything from a superclass called scene. Then define a setup. Uh, with the self inside that is the way Python creates object and then let's define our background the first thing that we are going to do so we are going to do self dot background color equals cyan and a cool thing about Pythonista is that you can go here and choose a color that you want without knowing exactly how is the these crazy numbers so now we if we want to see what we made we just can run the program and we run our first class this game in maybe a uh, um, landscape mode and let's see what we got here here it is uh, a landscape mode with this blue color and in the next video we will see how to add other stuff to our game we put our background color now we are going to create another variable called ground that will be a, a node uh, use this node class with parent equals self to make uh, our ground where we want to attach our uh, the, the the ground where we want to put our player so we will use um, this counter x equals zero and while uh, this counter is less than self dot sides dot v that is for width plus plus 64 that is um, the the shape, the width of the of the file that we are going to use as a tile for the ground, and so the tile will be a sprite node. Use the sprite node class with uh, with the image that will be plf column, and then uh, the name that is ground and dirt, and you see that appears here uh, here you can change uh, change the image and and so you put the position here of this tile that will be equal to x that is the horizontal place we we are going to put it and the height is always the same while the the x position will change and will be plus equal 64 each time so it will be one after one tile after another but to make it visible we have to ground dot at child the tile itself so let's see if it works and here it is on the ground the bottom we see our tile uh, one after another until the end of the screen and next time we will see how to put the player on this screen we have created our background color and our node for the ground and attach it to it our sprite node for the tile for the uh, for the ground where the player will be let's uh, create our our player sprite and we are going to create with the same class so uh, self player let's define this new attribute of this of the class will be uh, a sprite node like like before and we are going to take it from the right uh, bottom here on the bottom of the of the screen let's take a green one alien front and if you want to change it, let's tap here and change another another one. Then we are going to 
put the position of the sprite on the screen. Let's define the position uh, with self dot player dot position. Of course, it's equal. We're gonna place it in the middle. So let's take the position, the sides of the screen and the width of the screen. Let's divide it by two and let's put it into the vertical uh, sides, the vertical position at 41. Then uh, let's attach it to the ground. Uh, attach uh, the, the player to the ground to make it visible. Make it visible and it will be so the ground, the, the node where all the sprites will be attached. Um, add to this node like we did with the with the tile we are going to add our self player that is our sprite and let's see what what we got we get the player you see it's down here and we could we could change the position here on the on the height of the height a little higher or we can do another thing that's what it's gonna do we're gonna put the um, the rotation point to say so of the sprite and the anchor point okay and it is usually on the middle so if you want to rotate our sprite it will be um, the rotation point will be in the middle but now as we are going we don't want to rotate the sprite we want just to move it around on the left and on the right we are going to put the position anchor point. There it is. Uh, we are going to position it in uh, on the feet. So to do so, we got to put here 0 0.5 on the center and 0 on down of the of the sprites. So so that you see it will be here right where we want it to be. So in the next video, we will see how to uh, move around our sprite. Let's move our sprite now. Let's put in portrait mode our game and let's define the update function, pass the self argument as argument. Then we are gonna put this gravity uh, function in uh, returning into this G variable and if this the absolute value of G dot Y that will take the movement of our iPad will be more than 0 0.05 then we will have uh, let's put some the speed that depends on the inclination that it will take with g dot x multiplicated for let's say 50 and so let's define the new position of the self dot player on the x axis more speed so this is the new position depending on the inclination and so let's give the new position to the self player position that will be pause on the x and we can call it this x pause so there is more comprehensible x pause and always 41 on the other axis on the vertical axis and let's see if it works no attribute x okay position dot x we forget this and let's see if it works and as you can see it works and it goes faster with the speed parameters depending on the inclination and go less faster it doesn't move and it doesn't have any limit when it comes to the to the end of the screen and we will see in the next video how to fix this now let's see how to avoid that our character uh, goes uh, beyond the screen. So we will make a little change here and we will put here max 
among zero and minimum among self um, the self dot sides width the width and the self rate position speed so now let's go and you see that it can go further than the screen let's see in the next video how to uh, change the animation of the now we are going to add uh, some laser action we touch began and self and touch in as argument we are going to uh, load laser and so let's go laser equal our sprite node let's take it as always from our thing here and uh, it will be positioned just like the self the player position the same as the player and Let's write parent equal self here. Now, if we don't do nothing, You see that the laser is just the sprite that will stand there at the bottom. So now we are going to add some movement. So we are going to use the run action method applied to that sprite with this action sequence and the action dot move by from zero to one thousand that will bring it over the screen and action removed at the end of the action and let's see if it works there is an indentation error here yeah And you see that there is a typo here, and here is our laser that goes on sequence. But we want to add some music, some sounds too. When we hit the laser, so sound dot play effect and let's choose the sound, the sound effect for the laser this one okay you can also try it and let's see that we get to import sound here because if we don't import this you see there is name sound not defined so we get to import the sound module it works. I'm going to make our alien walk 
and uh, we will make uh, a standing texture for when he stands and uh, so this texture will will just uh, choose this alien front image for the standing and for the walking we will choose uh, two a list of texture and so the first texture that will be um, I think this one and the second texture in the list that will be cycled uh, will be this one and the Alien Dream Walk 2 uh, now in the setup here we are going to put our work state um, let's say self dot work state equal minus one that will be the state when he is standing and uh, then we are gonna animate our work in the update function and we are going to define uh, a controller for our work state and it will be an integer of the self uh, self player dot position dot x divided by 40 every 40 uh, pixel and we will grab the rest of this division to control uh, if he, which step is he making and if the step is not equal to self um, work state that we define it in the setup method then it will it will work so we will have that the player that the self player uh, dot texture uh, will be will be one of the two that we have chosen here of the working texture and so we'll be working step so when it makes more than 40 um, movement of 40 pixel it will be zero then will be one and so it will uh, alternate the two steps instead when it is um, else when it is standing the self dot player dot texture will be um, not the working one but the standing tester standing and here it is it is moving as you can see it goes just in in never turn and, and it goes to fires now in the next video we will see how we can make him turn on the left and the right depending on his position let's see how to make our character to look in the direction that he works because you know when he goes towards left it doesn't look looks on the left so we just have to add uh, one simple line of code and we're going to add to our player an x scale x scale attribute that will flip uh, the image when it is minus one but how to see when it goes to the left or to the right well we just um, use this two condition here when g dot x uh, is major than zero so will be one this condition will be true and so will be one when it goes towards right and g dot x it's minus than zero so when it goes towards the right direction the second condition will be zero so one minus zero will be one and so the image won't be flipped 
Instead, when GDX goes towards left and will be minus than zero, um, less than zero, then uh, the first condition will be false and then will be zero and the second will be true, will be one. So zero minus one will be minus one and so uh, the image will be flipped. Let's see if it works. And you see when it goes to the right, it looks on the right. And now when it goes to the left, he is looking on the left. And in the next video, we will try to put some sounds to the steps of the alien. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to add some sounds to the to the player when he moves. So uh, we are going to use the the sounds and play effect method, and we are going to add a sound like usual and we are going to going to this one rpg let's do step something like that and first step let's put this and we're gonna put how long do the sounds how loud it will be let's say it's zero and that's zero fine not too loud and then how uh, the pitch that will be 1.0 plus 0.5 uh, multiplicated for multiplicated for the g the g dot x so that it sounds a little bit different uh, one step from another you can see it makes so much noise and so to avoid this we are going to to change the the work state equal step that it sounds it sounds the right way okay in the next video we will put some new uh, new sprite on the screen to make it more okay now that we have this alien goes around and firing. Uh, we are going to make some uh, coin fall from the sky. So we are going to import the random function because the coin will go randomly uh, from the top to the bottom. And then we are going to create our coin object from the in everything from the sprite sprite node superclass. We will define an initial a method like always in ob objects in Python that will upset every keyword ar arguments that we will pass to the sprite sprite node superclass and so we will override an if method with with self and uh, uh, we're gonna give this as um, texture and every key keywords arguments uh, that will be the position of the sprite node and now that we defined the, the sprite uh, we are going to create the sprite uh, into the class game and we are going to uh, define our spawn spawn coins to make it appear always with the self and uh, it will be a new object every time that we call it and this new object will be created by the class coin and uh, will be parent to itself and then we will define a position for this object and it will be a random position that's why we use it uh, imported the random function that will start from 20 on the screen on the width of the screen and can end to the self sides width 
uh, so it can go anywhere uh, from the from left to right on the screen and the top and the self like the x position self height uh, will be uh, the top position of the screen the height of the screen and then we gotta call it every time we gonna update our screen so we are gonna call it here self spawn uh, like spawn coins so every time uh, it is updated it creates um, one of these random coin on the screen let's see if it works and it kind of works but doesn't give me the does not gives me uh, the rice right here let's see why um, okay this was the bug and here it is as you can see the uh, the coins are up and we can make something make them more visible and you see that they are there and uh, they spawn from 20 to the width of the screen so now there's no interaction there's no movement and in the next video we will see how we can make them fall down okay now in uh, this video we are going to make our coins that you see up there to fall down and we got we are going to create a new diff, new function here that will be up update player self just for a much cleaner code now we are going to spawn our coins um, a bit under a condition if the random dot dot random so this is a number among 0 and 1 when this is less than 0 0.05 so that we have less coins spawning as you can see up there now we must make them fold them and we have to call also the self player play update player otherwise we do not cannot move anymore our our alien and you see it's moving now in the spawn coin we are going to make the coin move with the coin dot run uh, action method and inside inside the sequence sequence that is called action dot uh, action dot sequence and the sequence of action that we are going to make is make them fall make the coin fall down action dot move by we will use move by by zero to minus one thousand down the screen and when it goes to one thousand it will be removed removed like this and it should work but should be very fast as you can see we can put a duration here of let's say two seconds and you see that it is it is almost right we want to set a random duration that is random dot uniform between two and four and we want to put it there so with a random duration that will make the coin fall in a different you see some some slower and some faster and this is very nice so in the next video we will see how to make the alien interact with the coins okay now we got our games with our player moving and firing but there is no detection of the coin intersection with our player let's make this happen so we have to make some uh, something we have to i put some um some placeholders here first we got to create 
the list for the following coins. So let's call it this uh, list of of coins maybe equal square brackets. So this is an array, a list of objects that we will um, uh, put inside this list coins when they fall down. And here in the update um, self, we are going to uh, put our, uh, as, as I wrote here, we're gonna look for the collision collisions of coins and collision of coins so we are going to call a function that we called collisions with coins uh, it's a good idea to be very self-explanatory uh, with with the with the names that we give to our attributes and our functions. So this is a list of coins where the coins will go. Collision with coins is the function where the um, the coins will go. So now we are going to define this function. Before we define the function uh, of the collision, we got to um, collect the coins that are falling, and we are going to collect them when they are created in the spawn coin coins function. So here it is our, so we are going to do self dot, how do we call the uh, list of coins, here it is. And we're gonna use this function append to append the coin and the coin is called coin. It's all very um, intuitive. So uh, now that every time that we create, that we run this button here and Sorry, there is an indentation here error, you know, that Python is sensible to indentation, is that important? So, um, there's no attribute, okay, um, let's comment this for the moment. And you see, uh, every time all these coins now goes into our list, but let's see what happens now we are going into to create uh, this coins collision intersection function that we are going to call um, we are going to call collision with coins okay we already decided collisions with with coins and so we are going to create first of all a, a player box p box it's okay to detect uh, where our alien is our player and we will make a rectangle starting from the self player position x and minus 20 on the y axis 32 and then the other vertex of the of the square is 40 and 65 maybe we can adjust it later if we... for for every coin for coin falling in how do we call it in a list in list of coins so uh, this is a way to it iterate to all our all the coins that are falling from the sky that you know we have just appended here so here you're going to check every one of them and uh, what happens if if coin falling is each one of these calling frame intersects 
intersects what? The player box hits. Well, let's call it just player box. I like it more. And what happens then? It happens that there will be a sound this one and then we will remove the coin falling in this way and we will also remove the coin from the list from the list of coins because we don't want it anymore we don't want to check it anymore because the collision is done yet so we want to remove what the coin falling that is this one okay now everything should work we got our self collision with coin in the update here that will check for this collision every time and now everything should work maybe okay now we detect it you see it disappears it's everything it's everything right we still don't have the uh, any point assigned to this to this objective that we reach it so in the next video we will see how to put a label with the score in our game okay now that we have um, our collision detection with also sounds we get to add the score to our uh, screen so we are going to create a label self uh, label label score and equal to label node that will be uh, zero and then we are going to put our font that will be futura and maybe 40 and then we are gonna write parent equals self and uh, after we created our label, we are going to put the self label score position dot position um, equal the self dot size width. The width of the screen is less two, so that appears in the middle, and the self dot uh, sides dot height. Uh, minus 40 so that doesn't go out of the screen and then we are going to put the self score the initial score to uh, zero and then we are going to make uh, the change of the the score here when uh, there is a collision inside collision detection so self score um, plus plus equal 10 each time and then the self label score dot text will be updated to the string of self self score okay because if you don't put as a string it gives an error so let's see if it works there is the zero up there and you see that it is incrementing when you make a collision with, with each coin and so it goes everything right okay now we are going to create our enemies and um, you see we get coins but we ain't got enemies so we are going to create a meter that falls from the sky and so we will copy this class coin and we'll make uh, all, uh, a very similar 
class. We're gonna change its name into Meteor. We're gonna make two different images that can be chosen randomly. So we're gonna use the random choice function and choose among a list of images like this, comma, and this. And here, instead of the image of the coin, we will put the variable image that will be one of that two images. So we are done with Meteor. Now we are going to spawn our items. Here we got, uh, we changed name. Uh, it was spawn coins. We call it spawn items. Here also, we change the name because now we can spawn both coins or item and the, the there will be this condition this else condition here that will make appear a coin before this there will be the if condition uh, that is a random condition so if random random is minus than 0 0.3 we will have a meter so we are going to copy, to paste and copy uh, that code of the coin and call it this meteor, that is the instance of the class meteor. The meteor position will also be just like the coin position, randomly generated. This is the duration that will be set the velocity of the meteor falling and the run action we will have a sequence of action that will start from zero but instead of move by we will say move to zero minus 1000 and the duration will be random two three four and then we will we'll remove it and then we will append the meteor to our list of coins that we will call now list of items so let's change list of items here and we got to change it also uh, in the setup in the setup game list of items and I think and then in the collision detection collision uh, collision with coins we are going to change the list of uh, list of coins here in items okay list of items and so for coin falling coin in list of items and uh, and also this I will call them for item 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 I think we're done here and uh, instead of collision with coins collision with items and also in the update collision with items let's see if there is some Indentation error at line 80. 80, 80, 80, 80. Okay. So we forget indentation after the column here, the if condition. Coins reference before assignment. Let's see where. Line 83. Here it is, Meteor. Let's do it again. Here it is. As you can see now, the Meteor uh, have a different movement, but the same behavior than the coin. They gave me the 
plus 10 points and in the next video we are going to differentiate the behavior among rocks, meteors and coins.